to notch or not to notch? Is that Shakespeare? So all the talk is about the new iPhone 10. Don't say iPhone X, because it's not, it's 10. There is no nine, it's no big deal. We'll just sweep that under the rug. We're going straight to 10. Apple's very excited. Many of you are very excited. They had a keynote. They told you this phone was the future, the screen to body ratio, and it's incredible, amazing, great. All the words that they could find in the English language. Magical, don't forget magical. And of course, the wondrous new facial unlock feature with the projection of many thousands of points on your face. But in the meantime, there's something interesting that I think needs to be addressed. And that is the conversation around the notch. Da, da, da. The notch, not the guy who created Minecraft, not that notch. No, the notch at the top of the iPhone 10. This little cutout near the top of the screen, which has now been integrated into the display. It's, it's become a component of the user interface now. I mean, you're pulling down your notifications as well as your search bar. And everything's happening up in this area. The facial recognition lives in this notch, this black bar across the top of the display. Now, some people, they think it looks Looks cool. They think it's very exciting. Much like the Essential phone, you have different elements going up around. Of course, on the Galaxy S8, which is next to the Essential phone, they chose a more traditional approach, getting super slim on the sides, but keeping a bit of a forehead and a bit of a chin so that the screen could maintain its more traditional layout. Now, Apple has been even more aggressive by implementing this cutout, implementing this notch, which will take up a bigger portion than the essential phone, but of course, not so much as the full forehead, the full bezel that exists on the S8. It's kind of in between the two. Now, a lot of people are wondering, hey, how is this gonna affect my daily life? What are apps gonna look like with a notch in the way? Is it going to be affected at all? Is, is it gonna be bothersome? Now, if you've spent any amount of time playing with these two devices, you know that because of their aspect ratios, different things happen in different apps. For example, on the S8, when you launch a YouTube video, you have black bars on both sides because it's a tall screen, but you can zoom in, you can punch in in order to allow yourself to see a full screen image which will crop the top and bottom a little bit. So as you can see here, a black bar comes across the top and this is no longer usable real estate. I guess it is in the sense that you can see your specifics along top, your clock and your notifications and so on. You can pull down from anywhere on that display, but it's not completely dynamic. Like not every app can take advantage of that layout yet. Now, if I go ahead and flip this horizontal, you'll see the same thing happens. I get a black bar on the top and the bottom. Now over time, it's possible that app developers will find better implementations implementations of how to take advantage of the unusual real estate presented by devices like the Essential Phone or the iPhone 10. But in the meantime, you might end up with some suboptimal experiences or smaller real estate than you thought you were getting. In other words, when you're in the operating system of the device, you get all this space, but then you launch into certain apps and you get black bars. The same will be true of the iPhone 10, at least at launch. Nonetheless, if you're anything like me with a curious mind relating to tech, you're probably wondering exactly what this notch would look like if you had it in your hand, if you had it on your phone. And so here is the special announcement of the day. Thank goodness there is now an app so that you can experience the iPhone 10 notch on your very own device right now. The app is called X out of 10 and I've installed it on both of these devices so you can get a better idea of how it will look on each one. Now, on the S8 it looks kind of weird because there's already a forehead and then you end up with the notch below that. Since this layout is not designed for the notch, you end up with a little bit of overlap on things like the clock. But roughly, that's kind of what you're looking at with the iPhone 10, especially with the iPhone's 5.8 inch screen. I'm gonna launch into YouTube here and I'm gonna attempt to play a full screen video. This is the default kind of playback for the S8. And much like the Essential phone, it creates a black bar at the top for different reasons. That's because this is a tall phone. But the S8 does have an option to zoom in to fill the screen. And now you get a sense for what video consumption would be like with that notch. So there you can see it. 
All right, that, that's kind of how you would live with it. So anyways, this gives you an idea of what the effect would be if you had this notch cut out in your video. Now this is a weird one for me because I'm kind of conflicted. The same way I am with the zoom in function on the S8 and the S8 Plus. It's like, do you want more video on your screen, even if it means chopping a little bit of it out? Or would you rather have the native aspect ratio and the black bars on the side? I'm not really sure. I think it's kind of cool to have the extra screen real estate, but then at the same time, you're, maybe you find this distracting. Now, as I said, the S8 is probably not the best representation of how this notch is going to look day to day because it already has a bit of a forehead. The essential phone, not so much. So this one spans all the way to the top and has this cutout already for the front facing camera. So if I turn the app on with this device, you'll see that's starting to look a lot like the iPhone 10. That's kind of what the layout would be like. And when you compare it head to head with the Essential, it's kind of a little bit upsetting in the sense that the Essential kind of does a better job of protecting more of your display. Now granted, it doesn't have the hardware and the, the mechanics for the advanced facial recognition. So there's not so much that has to go on up there, but nonetheless, when you compare the two head to head, I'll go ahead and turn it off one more time like that for some reason is just a more elegant look, at least to my eyeballs. Notch, no notch. Now, of course, over time, we're going to see various implementations of this. Maybe eventually Apple will be able to embed those components underneath the display so we can have a truly completely bezel-less design. Look at this. I just got a hot tweet in from Willie Do, and he's quoting someone on Twitter named Thomas, and he says that the iPhone 10 will render web pages with literal white bars on the sides. And you can tell that people are not very happy about that because it's got over a thousand retweets and 1500 likes. This is the total opposite of immersive. Okay, so he's not happy about it, but you can see we're at a kind of base level implementation here where we've got to get used to the idea of this notch living there and software developers, designers, and so on are gonna have to try to find out dealing with its existence. It's obviously not ideal but it's there. Now by comparison, when the Essential phone renders a web page, it blacks out this area, which causes it to kind of blend in, right? It, it looks more like a traditional bezel instead of kind of bringing attention to the cutout like Apple's rendering suggested here by Thomas might do. So either way, there are many questions surrounding this interface and how it will be affected long-term by this notch. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is this notch thing a big deal? Would you prefer it not to be there? Or, or are you willing to live with it? Would you have preferred Apple to just put a standard little bezel around the entire top? I have to say, when you first hold and look at an essential phone with the screen extending beyond on the camera, there is something cool about it. It's not something that you've seen before and I think the effect might be similar for the iPhone. Go download this Notch app and try it for yourself and let me know how you interpret the effect. It's kind of a cool little experiment to determine just how much you might like the iPhone 10. It's obviously not an iPhone 10 and it isn't a substitute, but anybody could try it at home and that's kind of cool. Notch or no notch, you decide. Okay, today's first question from you call me KB. Future of iPhone question mark? Absolute wireless is what we need. I assume he's talking about fully wireless charging. Yes, that's actually a thing. I read an article yesterday morning about some advancements in fully wireless charging. This is kind of crazy to look at. There's this module that sits on a countertop, let's say, and then any device capable that goes near it can suck a charge from it without being on a physical pad. It seems to me that it's a little ways off, like this isn't happening in any new generation of iPhone anytime soon. At least that's my prediction. I don't know, it's pretty wild stuff, but I'm not so sure it's ready for prime time. Here's one from Yusuf. He asks, what do you think of a 17 inch laptop for college? I think it's a little bit big. Most 17 inch laptops that are out there are like six pounds and up, something like that. And yes, back in my day, that was pretty normal, but now there's so many options that are far more portable. My recommendation would be to go with a slimmer laptop and then have a monitor set up back in your dorm room or at your apartment. So you get the best of both worlds, portability when you need it, 
and then for multimedia consumption, gaming or whatever, you have a bigger display which is stationary and you don't have to carry with you all the time. And here's one from Daniel Lovewell. Will you be giving away any iPhone 10s? Can I has one please? I don't know, you're gonna have to stick around for that. I know I'm gonna have some here at the studio and if it's anything like the past, sometimes a few extras show up and they need to find themselves a good home and that home might be yours. Thanks very much for watching. If you guys wanna participate in these types of Q and A's in the future, make sure to leave your questions in the comments down below.